gives free energy. Firstly, let me teach you some key concepts like entropy. We know that it measures the degree of disorder of a system. For example, consider gas particles in this closed container. Now I remove this lid of the container. As a result, the gas particles spread out in all directions. We know that these particles spread out without any external aid. It is a spontaneous process. Secondly, we can see that in this container, the particles are less disordered, while in this container, the particles are more disordered. We already know that entropy measures the degree of disorder. Here, the degree of disorder is small. Hence, its entropy S is also small. While in this case, the degree of disorder is high. Hence, its entropy S is also high or its entropy S is positive. To conclude this whole concept, we learn that if entropy is increasing or positive, it is a spontaneous process. Secondly, understanding enthalpy. Let's consider this hot water in this speaker. We know that with the passage of time, hot water releases heat into the surrounding. The hot water releases heat so that it gains stability. We know that when a system releases heat into surrounding, its enthalpy change del H is negative and it is an exothermic process. Also, it is a spontaneous process. Thus, we conclude that if enthalpy change del H is negative, it is a spontaneous process. Thirdly, understanding the effect of temperature on spontaneous process. Let's consider this melting ice. We know that melting of ice is a spontaneous process. Now, if I add some sort of heat to this melting ice, it will quickly melt. Thus, we conclude that if we increase temperature, the rate of spontaneous process either increases or decreases. Hence, note down all these important points. Until now, we learn that any spontaneous process is affected by enthalpy change del H, entropy del S, and temperature T. These three variables are must for understanding any spontaneous process. Now here is one big problem. For example, consider this melting ice. We know that this melting ice absorbs heat from the surrounding and it is an endothermic process. It is also a spontaneous process. Also we know that for endothermic process, enthalpy change del H is positive. Hence, we conclude that if del H is positive, it will be a spontaneous process. But wait a minute. This is a big problem. We already learned that if del H is negative, it will be a spontaneous process. While here, del H is positive, but it is still a spontaneous process. Therefore, we say that del H cannot show us that a process is spontaneous. Let me repeat it. Del H alone cannot show us that a process is a spontaneous. So I cross it. Now the question is, how can we determine that a process is a spontaneous? Well, here comes the Gibbs Baba. He took a blender and add del H, T and del S to it. He formed a mixture of del H minus T del S. He called this mixture as Gibbs free energy. It is denoted by del G. Hence, Gibbs free energy tells us whether a reaction is a spontaneous or not. Let me repeat it. Gibbs free energy tells us whether a reaction is a spontaneous or not. Therefore, we say that enthalpy change and entropy cannot determine a spontaneous reaction. Rather, it is the Gibbs free energy that determines whether a reaction is spontaneous or not. For example, it shows that if del G is less than zero or negative, it is a spontaneous process. If del G is greater than zero or positive, it is a non-spontaneous process. If del G is equal to zero, 
it is an equilibrium stage. To remember Gibbs free energy, note it down this easy mnemonic. Get high testing score. Let me repeat it. Get high testing score. Therefore, we say that Gibbs free energy teaches us about spontaneous reaction. Now, let me teach you some important points about Gibbs free energy. We know that del G is less than zero or negative, it is a spontaneous process. Del G is greater than zero or positive, it is a non spontaneous process. When del H is equal to zero, it is an equilibrium stage. Now, I will prove it in a very easy way. I write here del H and del S. Let del H is negative or it is an exothermic process in which heat is released to surrounding. We know that an exothermic process, usually the randomness or disorder of gas molecules increases. Let its entropy del S is positive. Also, we know that del G is equal to del H minus T del S. Here, del H is negative minus del S is positive. This minus and to this positive is equal to negative. I write negative and negative. We know that when we add two negative numbers, we get a negative number. So here, del G is equal to negative number. Therefore, we say that when del H is negative and del S is positive, it is a spontaneous process. Secondly, let del H is positive and del S is negative. We already know that del G is equal to del H minus T and to del S. Here, del H is positive minus del S is negative. Now, minus into minus is equal to positive. I write positive and positive. We know that when we add two positive numbers, we get a positive number. So, del G is equal to positive number. Therefore, we say that when del H is positive and del S is negative, it is a non-spontaneous process. Now, in the light of this information, consider this important MCQs from competitive exam. A process will be spontaneous at all temperature if del H is greater than zero and del S is less than zero. B option, del H is less than zero and del S is greater than zero. C option, del H is less than zero and del S is also less than zero. D option, del H is greater than zero and del S is also greater than zero. Pause the video and try to answer it. Well, we know that when del H is less than zero or negative and del S is greater than zero or positive, then del G will be negative and the process will be spontaneous at all temperature. Hence, the correct option is B. Thus note it down. Thirdly, let del H is positive and del S is also positive. We know that del G is equal to del H minus T and to del S. Here, del H is positive minus del S is also positive. Minus N to plus is equal to minus. I write plus and minus. Now, one is positive number and another is negative number. We may get the value of del G as both positive or negative. I mean, if the value of del G is negative, then it is a spontaneous process. If the value of del G is positive, then it is a non-spontaneous process. We know that in case of spontaneous process, del G is less than zero. The value of del G is del H minus T del S. I write del H minus T del S is less than zero. RT del S is greater than del H. RT is greater than del H upon del S. It means that this reaction is only spontaneous above a particular temperature. Let me repeat it. This reaction is only spontaneous above a particular temperature. Secondly, we know that in case of non-spontaneous reaction, del G is greater than zero. 
The value of del G is del H minus T del S. I write del H minus T del S is greater than zero. Our T is less than del H upon del S. It means that this reaction is only non-spontaneous below a particular temperature. Let me repeat it. This reaction is only non-spontaneous below a particular temperature. Therefore, remember that if the value of del H and del S is positive, the reaction is spontaneous above one temperature or non-spontaneous below another temperature. Let me repeat it. If the value of del H and del S is positive, the reaction is spontaneous above one temperature or non-spontaneous below another temperature. Similarly, if del H and del S both are negatives, we say that reaction is spontaneous and non-spontaneous at different temperatures. Thus note down all these important points. Finally, let consider this numerical problem from competitive exam. The reaction magnesium oxide plus carbon react together to form magnesium plus carbon monoxide gas for which del H is 491.1 kJ per mole and del S is equal to 198 joule per kilo mole. It is not feasible at 298 Kelvin. Temperature above which this reaction will be feasible is dash. Firstly, I write the given data like del H is equal to 491.1 kJ per mole are 491.1 into 10 to the power 3 joule per mole and the value of del S is equal to 198 joule per Kelvin mole. Secondly, the word feasible means spontaneous. In the question, we are asked that above which temperature this reaction will be feasible or spontaneous. We already know that if del G is less than zero, it is a spontaneous reaction. The value of del G is del H minus T into del S is less than zero. Our T is greater than del H upon del S. I plug in the values of del H and del S in this equation. After calculation, I get T is greater than 2480.3 Kelvin. It means that this reaction is spontaneous at temperature greater than 2480.3 Kelvin. Below this temperature, this reaction is non-spontaneous. For example, at 2300 Kelvin, this reaction is non-spontaneous. Thus note down all these important points. To conclude this whole lecture, we learn that if del H is negative and del S is positive, then del G is negative and it is a spontaneous reaction at all temperatures. Secondly, if del H is positive and del S is negative, then del G is positive and it is a non-spontaneous reaction at all temperatures. Thirdly, if del H is positive as well as del S, then del G is either positive or negative. I mean, at a particular temperature, a reaction is non-spontaneous and at another temperature, reaction is a spontaneous. Similarly, if del H is negative as well as del S, the del G is either positive or negative and the reaction may be spontaneous or may be non-spontaneous. Hence, note down this important conclusion.